Hello YouTube, Turtle Lags here, bringing you another AFK Journey video. Uh, I am live here on Twitch. Uh, you guys can say hi to YouTube if you'd like, say hi to mom, your future self. And as per usual, I'm going to first go over Snow Stomper's kit, uh, then we will go over and do a showcase for the team that I have achieved my highest score with personally and then we're going to test out some analytica teams that people have cooked up uh, as i was telling chat earlier the beauty of snow stomper is that he is one of the most flexible dream realm bosses to cook up uh, teams against uh, and i think a lot of it has to do with the majority of his damage coming from the snowman but if you have uh, an, like an assembly of uh, an assembly if you have a team of units that are able to pop that snowman quickly then uh the world is your oyster with uh you know with regards to assembling a good team for snow stomper so anyways without further ado let's go ahead and get started uh so snow stomper in a nutshell basically he does a couple things he freezes your units uh, and actually turns one of them into a snowman, making them unable to move or act and causing them to lose 0.4% of their max HP per second. Uh, and uh, typically, well not typically, always, uh, your units will get aggroed onto the snowman and won't be able to attack the boss again until the snowman's destroyed. This will happen periodically throughout the fight. and. Uh, it is in your best interest to crack the snowman, crack your unit out of the snowman as quick as possible to otherwise, if they are encased in the snowman for too long, they will actually die. Uh, yeah, but other than that though, you know, he also has the ability to silence all enemies, making them lose their max HP. This makes it so that actually bringing Smokey is not optimal, uh, because what will happen is he'll do the he'll summon a blizzard um, every for 20 seconds at the 10, 40, and 70 second mark, uh, which means that for the majority of your, the fight, you know units like Coco or you know as a prime example who relies heavily on um, their skills in order to do things like heals are going to suffer a lot, and so this can impact your uh, team building. What else? Um, you know, Snow Stomper dealing true damage, um, inflicting bleed, which is also, you know, just a lot of damage over time effects with Snow Stomper. And then Freezing Breath, forming a snowball, attacking the healthy, healthiest enemy, dealing damage and knocking them down for one second. And then, you know, multi target damage within a one tile arc three times. So essentially, Snow Stomper, he's not like the hardest hitting unit or a Dream Realm boss, it's not like Skyclops where he can like one-shot your team with this laser beam. Snow Stomper is more like attrition and silencing and really powerful crowd control. So if you can manage that, then uh, you're gonna do well. Now, uh, the team that I believe is the best that I personally tried and achieved a high score with was with this really spicy Cassidy Florabel OD comp along with you know merely for more DPS so uh, basically the idea here is that you're running the crescent spell to uh, create a hundred percent uptime on the magic defense shred good morning turtle grats on supreme plus Diano. missed the live summoning session yesterday thank you so much Reggie thank you thank you so much yes and you're on YouTube by the way we're filming the snow stomper video uh, yes, and you know, for those of you on YouTube who aren't aware, I do live stream uh, nearly every day on twitch.tv forward slash turtle So, you know, you can catch actually a lot of these really cool uh, things live on Twitch during my live stream if you'd like. You can also ask questions, you know, you can have your account reviewed uh, by me, you know. Um, and this is especially helpful for people who don't have uh, all the units. Um, but anyways, uh, assuming you do have all the units, I do believe this team has incredible synergy. The reason being that Cassidy blesses Odie, 
making it so that Odie, who is a very fast attack speed unit, is able to trigger a lot of Cassidy's undercurrent and magic damage. Additionally, Cassidy has this unique synergy with Floribel where when you have Cassidy at Mythic Plus, when, she, when Cassidy casts her ult, which is the tidal wave, hey Amrisa, um, um, good to see you, good to see you. Uh, she is able to bless all her allies with the, um, the blessing of tidal strength, which is what allows you to do magic damage, allows Cassidy to do magic damage, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, every time, uh, you know, one of your allies, blessed allies, uh, deals damage, normal attack damage. How's rank 3 doing? Oh, are you referring to uh, the um, Supreme Arena? No, I, someone took my number 3 spot, and so I'm chilling at rank 14 right now. Yeah. Uh, yes, and so Cassidy, you know, I, I read her kit, and... With her Mythic Plus, it actually states that it can be all allied heroes, which includes Floribel's three summons. So essentially, you know, Cassidy is blessing uh, one, two, three. Typically, she blesses four allies with her Tidal Wave, right? But with Floribel's other three units, you go from blessing five units to blessing eight units. So you got like eight units or nine uh yeah eight units so there's like or blesses four units plus another three so that's seven units i'm sorry so blesses another seven units so your cassidy's damage output almost doubles with just adding floor bell uh yeah and, and i have tested this in one of my old videos i'm not going to waste time here but just take my word for it uh okay so and then of course we have merrily Basically, just bring your next strongest DPS uh, in the fifth slot. Personally, I like Merrily because she does high uh, damage output, even though the true damage got nerfed, but Merrily is still quite good, and I do have her EX15. And of course, it goes without saying that Rainier is going to be very important. Now, one thing you could try doing, actually, is instead of Merrily, you could swap with Alsa. And what this achieves is that, uh, you know, it you are able to get even, I mean, if you weren't having 100% uptime already on the Crescent spell, you will when you have also. But personally, I do like Merrily a lot. Um, so I think I'll probably, and uh, mind you, we also need to have a three mall, a, a three what faction bonus. And so, of all the light bearers, you know, cause cause you have Cassidy and Rain. Well, actually, mm, so you would probably want to either bring a Mauler or a Wilder, right? Cause you need a three faction bonus. Mm, let me think. Actually, I do think Alsa could be a good choice. So here's what we'll do: we'll try with Alsa first, and my Alsa's EX. Uh, 10 and then we'll try with an EX15 merrily so we'll see how it goes hey pre lobby sweat good to see you uh, what's with me hi turtle yo yo you're on YouTube right now by the way so l let's actually try this team first and you have one extra damage dealer who's taking advantage of the 35% magic defense shred as you can see because we have four mages our our crescent spell is spamming right now you see how it's being activated every like two to three seconds that is a hundred percent magic defense uptime Ooh, now why did it also die that is one problem with also she is very squishy although i have never seen a unit die that quick so I guess also that might be the reason why Alsa is not the play. Because her AI is bugged, she should bounce back. Ah, okay. Got it. Okay, so that's why. So I don't recommend Alsa for this fight. As, as you can see, <laughs> that did not end well.
Okay, so that doesn't count. Sorry about that. But hey, you know, sometimes you just don't know until you try. Alright, so let's go with the, the lineup that brought me my best score. Uh, so we'll go with Merrily. And there are some other teams that people have cooked up. But let's try this one first. Uh, they're going to fix her AI after her banner and Reddit is on fire again. Well, I officially sold out and left the guild I was part of since launch to get a spot in the top 5 guild on my server slash district. That's good e-commerce. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for yourself, you know? Like... And it's incredible how quickly a guild can fall apart, too. So, you, you do want to be in a very resilient guild if you can. GG, you, you put your name on test. Yeah, so, we're, we're doing really well here. And the X's are the silence, by the way. And, and you'll see from, uh, you know, after... Wow, we still have 19 seconds to go. We've already crossed the 70% mark. Yeah, we're, we're doing really well, guys. Ooh, Odie died, though. Ooh, 77.47%. Both Odie and Cassidy died. Now, I, I should actually mention, by the way, that uh, we are in epic mode now. We're, we're not in whatever it was previous, so this is a harder uh, boss. And as you can see here, Cassidy did a fair amount of damage, and part of it is because Floorbell provided three extra units to bless with the blessing of tidal strength with. Yeah, rank three is back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so now that you've got, you guys have an idea of what I believe to be the best team, we'll go over some Analytica teams, because some people have brought the spice, but is it hype or is it actual, actual legit? So, let's take a look here. Okay, so someone did bring Coco. I do recommend that. If you are having survivability issues, you could swap your Merrily with Coco. Uh, kind of like this. And I'm not sure if the damage output will change that much. As a matter of fact, it may even help your damage output because you are giving your Odie a Mauler bonus. Or actually, no, it doesn't matter because the three faction bonus, yeah, it doesn't matter actually. Mm. Okay, let me let me see. So someone was running this team without Floribel and without Cassidy, but with Thorn. For those without Cassidy at Epic Dip. Oh, okay. Someone was just cooking for people who didn't have units. Okay. Mm. <laughs> and of course, there's some trolling people. Hmm. And of course, there's some people who brought team comps but didn't show results. Okay, we tested the the uh, Ulsa team. That didn't work. Uh, okay, and then that's pretty much what I ran. Hmm. Ooh, someone brought a Brian. Ooh, he scored higher than me. Okay. So I don't, he unfortunately did not show, he was like, she was like, merely refund when, and then we replaced merely with Brian, okay. Now my Brian is only EX5, so this could be a problem, but what spell worse than Brian, the absolute state of this game, oh god. Dang, Brian did more damage than Cassidy. Okay. Uh, but what spell did he run? Most likely the Crescent spell. Um, so let's go ahead and try with the Brian comp. I mean, most of you won't have Brian built, but we're, I'm kind of testing what could be the highest spell. Now, I'm kind of curious, does the bird count as an extra summon? Because if so, that's a lot of blessing. Oh yeah, he does count. The bird has a shield. So... 
Now you have nine units being blessed and activating Cassidy's blessing of tidal strength when she holds. So when the tidal wave rushes, all of these units have the blessing of tidal strength. So whenever the other eight units attack, Cassidy does extra magic damage. Started building, building my Cassidy this season, but just got mythic for her today, so long way to go. Uh, it'll be worth it, believe me. Ooh, my god, that's scary. I did, oh, Odie's on life support, but maybe, oh god. Ooh, new record. 77.97%. That was with an EX5 Brian. An EX5 Brian did more than an EX15 Merrily. That's kind of scary. Wow. Imagine if my Brian was more than EX5. <laughs> Merely to the streets she goes. Wow. That, that is really surprising. Okay. So you just need Tidal Essences and a Brian, Supreme Plus. And Keck win, right? Okay, so let me see if there's anyone. <laughs> Good morning, Toes. Good to see you. Cash some yellow stones quick and test. Dude, I need more yellow. I need more temporal essences for my Dionel. My Dionel stuck at EX5. I have the essences to bring him from 15 to 20, but not from 10 to 15. Hmm. Okay. Man, I saw your disappointment in Diano's arena performance and that. Dude, I was... Yeah, it broke my heart. <laughs> oh, man. I, I was... Like, I remember for the last half of the video, I didn't even know what to say. I was just like... Man. Yeah. But it is what it is. Hmm... Okay, that's pretty much the last team. So I guess we can go over some free-to-play comps now. Wow, that is insane. So Dionel not worth? Uh, my Dionel is a full gold set of charms and EX10 and Supreme Plus, and I won three out of eight matches. Uh, but on Arena... But if you were to count like the actual good opponents, then we had a zero out of six win record. <clears throat> okay, so assuming you don't have a, a Mythic plus Rainier, uh, you would probably go... <clears throat> Um, Merrily, and Kruger. You just made the best choice. Something like that. The economy for temporal essences is the worst. Oh, don't die, thank you. I choked on some almonds, but I'm okay. Uh, I have an easier time getting Twilight than them. Yeah, I'm sitting on like 160 Twilights and 30 Temporals. <laughs> it's really Monka. But uh, anyways, this is one build that I recommend. If you are having certain viability issues, you can swap merrily with Coco, especially if you're in Epic. And that works out just fine, actually, because it might work out better, actually, because... Um, well, the problem is Kruger's only helping your floor bell. So Kruger might not even be the best play. Uh, what may be better is... What is a mauler that could help? Maybe Shakir? 
Actually, Shakir is pretty, historically has been pretty good in Dream Realm bosses, so two, I have two, two temporal, oh my god. <laughs> Felt like it took forever to get enough for Odie to three star. Oh my god, Toes, that's, that's pain. Okay, so um, I do like this con because you still have the magic, the crescent shell while having Shakir and Coco to maintain the uh, Mauler bonus while having good offense. Alternatively, what you could do is if you feel like you don't need a Coco, you could probably just bring in Kruger here. You just made a we can uh, give this a try. Now, the only problem is that you might not have enough for 100%, I think you can still get 100% uptime on magic. So uh, let's go ahead and give this a try. So this is uh, one free to play option we could consider. Now, some of you guys might not have Floribel though. So uh, I gotta say, if you don't have Floribel and Cassidy, then uh, it might be, you probably won't score super high. Just because Casty and Floribel combine is such a crazy combo. I'm a little concerned about OD survivability. The one nice thing about having Rainier is that uh, whenever you damage the enemy that has been dynamic balanced, your ally that was dynamic balance heals up. And that was what allowed us to keep Odie alive all this time. How does that combo work? Basically, uh, the way cast 12.2 build, that's actually not bad. You're only scoring like 7% less than normal. That's actually not bad. That's how powerful the Casty Floribel combo is. And actually, Floribel did more damage because of Kruger. Uh, so basically, the way the combo works is that when Casty does the blessing, does the tidal wave, if you have her Mythic Plus, when she ults, the tidal wave flows through your units, right? Blessing all your units with the blessing of tidal strength, which basically means that while they do have this blessing, for the next, like, I think eight or nine normal attacks, they uh, cause Cassidy to do an extra 60% magic damage. And when you have Floribel summoning three other units that each count, who each also get the blessing, you're getting 240% magic damage per normal attack, uh, you know, assuming that, yeah, you're getting 240% magic damage per normal attack from just Floribel. Yeah, so it's it's pretty nuts. So it blesses all three of the child labor force. Yes, they, if you want to put it that way, yes. And that's why Brian, like you saw earlier, an EX5 Brian did more than an EX15 Merrily. And the reason for that was because Brian's bird also counts as an additional unit. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, and so, you know, if you don't have Floribel or if you don't have Cassidy, it's kind of rip because you could do like Cassidy with Brian, but nobody really builds Brian unless they did it on accident. Uh, and if you don't have Cassidy, then, you know, I do admit a lot of people build Cassidy last. Uh, so, I mean, I can even show you what it's like without without Casty or without Floribel. So this might be a more realistic option for a lot of you. Uh, and at that point, you almost have to consider just swapping to the physical. But uh, so the reason why the I would still recommend the Crescent spell for the Floribel variant is because um, because Floribel you know, with the extra units, the causes Cassidy to do more magic damage. So, uh, you know, the magic damage increases with the, the Crescent spell, right? And Cassidy is who I'm working on right now. I'm one of the ones that saved her for after all the must-have people said I needed to. 
Yeah, 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 that's good, that's good. I regret not pulling for Floribel. Yeah, I, to believe me, I say a lot of people are in the same boat as you. Um, I admit that, like, the only reason I pulled Floribel... Well, I pulled Floribel because of her aesthetics, and she seemed like a fun unit, but I was disappointed in her initially, but I'm so glad I have her built now. Yeah, but anyways, let's go ahead and try this out. So the advantage of running uh, Merely is that she is one of the highest damage dealing physical attackers out there who can take advantage of Kruger's, um, you know, physical defense right. Me three. So do we know who the next banner in three days is? We do not. I'm very close to sending all my gems into the all hero banner to try to get her. Hmm. She's really good. Casty is amazing. And she was actually really cool in the main story too. I liked her. Yeah, and she wears a bonnet, which I think is, I don't know, I, I like that for some reason. Ooh, Kruger died. Ooh. Oh, because we don't have the faction bonus. No, this team's not going to work. Right, because we have two Maulers, two Light Bearers, and a... Oh wait, no! We did have three Maulers and we still died. I'm not sure how that happened. Okay. I'm not going to use up any more runs, but essentially another free-to-play option is if you're dying, you can swap Merrily for Coco. And that should actually improve your survivability. I'll just do this run, just so you see what the damage differential was. Floribel was my second S+, plus because I thought she would synergize well with Cessia's monster. Yeah. It's funny, like, the Cessia floorbell combo is probably the weakest combo out there. Uh, in terms of, like, summons. Like, even the Damien floorbell, or, I'm sorry, the Damien... Uh... Yeah, the Damien Floribel combo is better than uh, Cessia Floribel, but... Ooh. Now, I think part of the reason why Coco is kind of struggling a little bit here is because Snow Stomper does silence your units. But as you can see, uh, she's doing a good job of keeping your team alive. Now if we can hit 12 bill, I think that's actually a win. Yeah, actually the damage still wasn't that bad. You were only, we only scored a bill less. 63.6%. So I mean, that's kind of the difference, right? Yeah, floor bill is a huge power boost, damage boost. That's like, with floor bill, you're almost gaining an extra 10% in clearance. Yeah, and then, okay. So anyways, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.